join the captain and his crew when things go sour as their status quo is about to be turned upside down. How will the crew handle the weight of the corporate thumb, the hard cases of dangerous trade routes, their own greed? Find out as the Southern Dom Foolery Network presents Live and Let Fly. Alright folks, I came to do two things. Live and let fly. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh <laughs> my god. Right. <laughs> Zach. Wait, I didn't do it right? No, no, hold on. Sorry, you freaked me out because I'm literally editing they live the reaction for that. Like I was working on that edit before we started this call. So that since you I, me I knew that, there. Emily. Uh, you see I am prescient and Oh, and okay. <laughs> She's also no. currently chewing bubble gum. It's amazing. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. We're recording. No, yeah, you can't that's... have any of my bubble gum, actually. Because oh. you're all out. So all you can do is live and let fly. Okay. Okay. You can just sit there and do nothing. Sit there and do nothing. <laughs> 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 all right. How's it, how's it going, everybody? That will never not make me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, nah, do one, just do one more clean take of it, Heath, yeah. for posterity. You wouldn't want me to sit there and do nothing. There you go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. It's out on the airways. Perfect. We we talked about this video on our other show, but we'll post it up again whenever this episode comes out, just to remind everybody. Yeah, guys, what was your favorite banner from the other show? Let's capture that lightning in a bottle and just repeat it here on Live and Let Fly. Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't be the first time. (laughs) We are friends. Everybody knows that true, real friendship is just like the same fucking bits getting replayed over Mm -hmm. and over. It's the same way. Cycled in jokes. 15 to 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never yeah. was that truer than the couple of years after the movie Anchorman came out. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. dude. Absolutely. Oh, oh, oh. Definitely. Well, you, here's the thing, okay? We've been doing this podcast for like a little over three years now. Not this Not show. This one. <laughs> but But we've been creating a, a podcast together. There's only so many things. Mm-hmm. You know, like we're, we've already repeated ourselves. I think we've within, done the Mrs. Downfire. The <laughs> yeah. Within the bit, like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Multiple times. It's, yeah. it's good. Okay. That's us. We're really He's, topical and fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. 20 year old movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're aging they're... millennials, okay? Just deal yeah. with it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We always Geriatric have to make references. <laughs> Duh. They're called comedic staples. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. He, well, thank you yes. for churching it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Church it well, up. Well done. Well done. <laughs> no, um, yeah. How's life treating you, folks? Well, I was good till you told me you didn't have any gum. Now I'm really depressed. Well, <laughs> corner well, store. soft, motherfucker. Get, get past it. <laughs> okay, that's a hard one. That's a hard one to get past. I was really looking way. forward to some bubble gum. All right, dude. I got some, but it's fruit stripe. Oh, you can keep it, man. Yeah, okay, oh, man. well, that's a like that's like the next stage of depression. <laughs> so <laughs> having fruit stripe. Gum. Yeah, so I was it. just like, oh. I was at work, uh, this was like sometime last week, and somebody came into my office. I was like, hey, man, you want a piece of gum? I was like, yeah, sure. And he had, pulls out a pack of the, the fruit stripe gum. And I took it, I chewed it, I chewed literally three times, spit it in the trash can, and said, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, Did I you got ask him if he came from the nineties or something? You know, <laughs> yeah. fruit stripe is like the Lacroix of gum. You know, it's well, seriously no, wait, though, like hold up, it lasts longer okay. yeah. than fruit stripe. Yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. it, has, it has significantly more flavor than Lacroix. <laughs> it just doesn't last very long. Fruit right. stripe would be like a thimble of Dr Pepper. 
Yeah. <laughs> that that you must then chase with three with, gallons of water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you can have another. Yeah. How did they get away with that? Marketing to children? Is that how they Marketing. got away with creating yeah. such a yeah. shitty so product? Adults were buying that That's right. Nonsense. I'm calling you we're out, not, Fruit Strike Gum. Right here. I'm living with a fly. Them. Damn it. We could have gotten this sponsor, Zach. Yikes, stripes. I'm, I'm throwing that. that sponsor in the trash. <laughs> Fuck them. Oh <my> <laughs> Just like oh my a piece God. of their gum after 10 seconds. <laughs> Ferrara Candy Shop, you should cut be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm with Z on this one. I'm with Z on it. I don't, I don't want that sponsorship, and it only lasts for 15 seconds. Man, we could have gotten tens of dollars there, all right? <laughs> they were not selling longevity, okay? They were selling cool colors and I think, like, I don't know, fucking tattoos or something. Didn't they have temporary, like tat- yeah, a little, yeah. little temporary? Uh, it was a rainbow zebra. That's mm-hmm, what they were selling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you that's, want cool colors, yeah. eat Starbucks. If you want tattoo, Starbucks. go to a tattoo. Eat, I mean eat Starbucks. Starbucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me just go and grab some coffee beans and start chomping on them. If you want various right, shades of like beige, you can go to Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, Adam Starburst. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If this makes you feel any better, my brain immediately was like, "Eat some of uh, Lisa Frank," but I was like, "Nope, don't do that." That's yeah, just, just the, eat a full bag. That's like edible. Lisa Frank shit's like forbidden snacks level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it is. Straight <laughs> Never up. Never have I wanted to make like a trapper keeper sandwich so no, much no, in my no. life. <laughs> All them that colors. That fucking rainbow dolphin. I'm just going to chomp it. <laughs> now now I'm it. just thinking of like how many great skitter names could be made from just listing candies. Oh like my God, Starburst, yeah. oh Starburst my God. Skittle. Boom. Skittermander mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you call it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kit Kat, a skittermander called what you call it? Just yeah. yeah. skittermander <laughs> named Mars Bars. <laughs> just that. <laughs> Mars, Mars Bars. <laughs> you can just call me Mars. <laughs> I mean, John named his skittermander after a. a Potato chip. Barky. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, that's right. Yeah. It obviously is the secret up. sauce. You know, yeah. like just name Skittermanders after you know, food snacks. brands. Food flavors. Yeah, food mm-hmm. flavors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Slim Jim. I, the Skittermander. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, excuse me. Right it's Slender itself. James. <laughs> Slender <laughs> James. That's his formal name. <laughs> Slender my James. My parents call me Slender James, okay? <laughs> that's my government name. <laughs> Name. That's my best name, and I hate it. You just call me Slim Jim. John, did you see uh, the painting I made of your Skittermander? Yeah, was yeah, painting? I did. It was lovely. Yeah. I thought you did a really great job. I thought it was a marker drawing. Shit, you know, you used no, paint. It, yeah, it was. It was like I don't even know what kind of paint. It's whatever the mass-produced bullshit paint we were let, letting the kids paint with. Oh, the Tim. Tempura, tem- not tempura, but tempura, like. tempura paint. <laughs> now that's colors you can eat, Emily. <laughs> 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 Although, good luck painting with tempura. Yeah, that's tough. It's, yeah. It's, it's, okay, it's tempura. You can, you can tempura. maybe like you could like put some glue on a piece of paper and like just like sprinkle the tempura. The tempura. Flakes. Yeah, I will the have you know, I was it. correct. <laughs> I was correct. It's that's temp- how you get fried sweet heat. E R A tempura. I know things. Like tempera? Like tempera? Yeah, yeah maybe that's how it's pronounced. Probably. And yeah. so around here, tempera. Tempera. <laughs> God dang it. The God same dang it. <laughs> Bobby. You got them shrimp paints? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Y'all got any of them shrimp paints? <laughs> Okay. And yeah, listen. Oh, I like to let it hang just a little too long, you know? I like it. Uh, like an right. SNL sketch or a Key and Peele sketch. You know? mm-hmm. This guy's a little too long. <laughs> all right. Uh, Heath, man, I think it's time for one of your famous Live and Let Fly recaps. Man, what happened last time? He wasn't I, even playing last I, time. I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I, just, I completely zoned out. I have no idea what happened. It's a yeah, complete it, black it, hole for me. It is ironic you're picking me. Uh, my character hung out with the goblins trying to, uh, you know, get the drift engine prepared to be put on our ship. Yeah. The rest of the crew went to, uh, well, I don't can't remember his name, but they went to the... Rygan Vool. Rygan Vool, yeah. Rygen Vool, yeah. yeah. They went to Rygan Vool's um, cult singularity headquarters. House. Yeah, the Singularity House. And... Uh, had a discussion with him <clears throat> and tried to finagle some a big shipment of black hearts out of him. How, which how they many black hearts? Uh, 
160 to 250,000 roughly. Hey. Um, yep. <clears throat> All right. Yep. Way to go. Proud of you. And uh, they eventually succeeded in that endeavor by Emily's character agreeing to install a necrograft. Heath, great job, man. Do you have a dirty 30 on on uh, on deck? If not, just take another one. If you do, just take another one. Cause, uh, <laughs> if you do, it, and even if you don't. Yeah. You know. Okay. Just cool. take one more. You can have one. I appreciate you doing my job for me, man. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Yes, sir. We can do. <laughs> oh, hey, speaking of, of dice, did you guys all get your um, new Norse Foundry I, I did, gemstone I did. dice? Yeah. We had Emily's, it. Emily's is sitting on our couch right now. So yep. so listen to this shit. I, Adam came to town and we went and, uh, you know, had dinner and some drinks at the Keg and Barrel, the local pub. And <clears throat> I stopped by and got my die and I, we were showing it to Grace, uh, Adam's wife, and she rolled it, rolled a natural 20 immediately and then the first I, roll and then i put it away and i have yet to roll it i'm not gonna roll it it's got what i've decided is because like you know my goal i've stated numerous times this year is to gm more i just finished stf and friends getting to gm that now what i really want to do is like make my own home game to gm <clears throat> to get more practice so that maybe in a few years <clears throat> i can do a show for the network you know um, but I've decided that's going to be my G- GM dice because it's only ever rolled a natural 20 and nice. I'm not going to roll it again until I start GMing another game. Nice. It's been blessed by grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. I like that. Indeed. Like the Tell us that thank you. Even, you know, like no, yes. right, nobody got that Elden Ring joke. I okay. I, I, I got it. I got it. Zach. I'm sorry. I said I like you. the tarnished. Okay. Ah. Let's not um, dwell on it. All right. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just jealous. Adam, look at that dirty 30 on deck, bro. RPG. Throw that shit in the trash. I'm taking it away from you, dude. It's gone. <laughs> just just go. fruit you stripe it. it. Yeah. I literally yeah. just threw it. <laughs> that's that's going to be the new wipe it, <laughs> right? Instead of wipe it, it's fruit stripe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did actually just literally throw it, and I don't know where it went. Well, that's Good job. a shame. Good job, that's Adam. That's a shame. You I hope you don't ashamed. need that tonight. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> You went too That's far what, for the bit, this, man. This is literally why we can't have nice things. You're right. <laughs> this, I'm sorry, um, Eric, that I treated your your gift to us so terribly. Poorly. Poorly. Uh, ten long gnomes, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other Eric. I mean, Eric yeah. treated it pretty poorly himself, though, putting it in a jar of fart-flavored true. dirt. It's true. <laughs> that, to be fair. Mailing it to us. It we'll say fart-scented, because I, for one, didn't taste it. I was going to say, did you taste <laughs> it? <laughs> but it was mm-hmm. the dirtiest of like 30s. Fart, though. So. I tasted it just by smelling it. It was that yeah. bad. Yeah, exactly. I got a, I got a very good sense of the taste. Probably the dirtiest dirt that I have ever been around. Like yeah, smelled. It, was it, was, it was it was pungent. Yeah, yeah, it was the Nakonda's dirt for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, you got the double yeah. dose of banter this week. Congratulations. <laughs> we, uh, we like to give you more value for your dollar. Thank you for your banter buck. If yeah. You will. Uh, okay, so here's the deal, right? Uh, it's going to take. About two more days uh, in game time uh, for you all to get the Drift Engine finished and to get these black hearts ready to go. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you want to do in this time, or y'all want to just like fast forward and get there? I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to like doing any help needed to with the with the engine if to needed. Speed it to just up, kinda, yeah, or, you know, just to. It's for like crew morale to be part of the, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Gadrick wouldn't mind trying to speed it up a bit. It's got a plus eleven to engineering, so okay. I, well, yeah. I mean, you guys can certainly do that. Uh, that's not a problem. Yeah, uh, it, the drift engine will be finished uh, before the black hearts will. Yeah. Um, you know, well, that'll I mean, be that'll be nice because on a sort of rotating set of shifts like that, it gives me time to give the goblins a break every now and then and play some Super Swarm Six with them. You know, mm-hmm. hell yeah, mm-hmm. hell yeah! I think Vince uh, is going to join you for that. Nice. Yeah. I would say that if we are able to fill uh, finish the drift engine work early and we still have a day on Absalom, I would uh, invite Gadrick. Out for drinks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to go? I don't know. 
I mean, a, 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 a nice-ish pub, but the like click, not clack, the click I was just going to say the Click Clack Club. Yeah, we could go to the Click Clack Club. Okay. If you want to know about that, well, you can read. It's in some Starfinder books. But you could also <laughs> listen to our other podcast, the APA. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, so... I can't wait till that joke dies. <clears throat> okay. yeah, it so, never will, because we're still going to have another show. Yeah. So we'll call, no this, we'll call this a day until, you know, we're at the evening of, of the final day, let's say. Um, or before the final day, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You finish up the drift engine. It's it's installed. It's ready to go. Flea Greeb, Goog, and Rattlesnarp, you know, mm-hmm. are very pleased with their work. Uh, they do remark that they expected more trash on the ship, <laughs> trash haulers, but they're not They're not going to ask too many questions about we're, it. We're new at this. We haven't got our full <laughs> collection of trash yet. We've just started. Well, if you wanted, you could have, you know, we could have loaned you some trash just to just to get the place some character. It's like, in fact, that looks like three of my bags of trash over there. <laughs> yeah. And I recognize that can. <laughs> Talk about repeating jokes. We did repeat that mm-hmm. joke. Whatever, okay, Josh? <laughs> that was word for okay. word. Okay, okay. <laughs> Listen, man, we can like to give you less value for your buck, okay? We give you two banters. We give We're it and take it, it away, out. you know? Mm-hmm. It's, how this it's, called building, it's called building an in-world lexicon, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's comedic <laughs> staples, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're supposed to support each other, not tear each other down, Josh. That's right, Josh. program. I expected better. I mean, you wouldn't want us to sit around and do nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, yeah. Uh, anyway, so the, the final yeah. evening, yeah, absolutely. You know, the Black Hearts will be arriving in the morning. You can make your way to the Click Clack Club if you want to have some drinks with Gadrick. Mm-hmm. Take him out for a nice seafood dinner. Mm-hmm. Never yeah, call him it- again. <laughs> yeah, just leave him there. <laughs> it's an Anchorman reference. You know what I'm saying? Anchorman, hey. Hey. <laughs> Turned um, it back around. Man. And I'm, I'm going to leave him there Tor- and be like, don't you ever not get me food again. <laughs> and he just oh, leaves no. him in the Athlon station. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I would, you know, we'd take him, we'd go out. If you, you know, I'd ask you, I wouldn't make you come, but I would kind of poke my head in be like, uh, Gadrick, uh, I was wondering if you'd like to join me for um, a, a couple, a couple pints of ale at the local pub. Um, there's a great place called Click Clack Club. Uh, I don't know if you've been there, but uh, I, I figured after two days of hard work that we we deserve it, and uh, it's on me. Gadrick looks at you. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, well, no time like the present. Let's. Uh, I'll head on right out. now. I'll, uh, yeah, well, hold on a sec. Right, let me let me get my. Got to put myself together before I leave. You, you know how it is. Yeah, I mean, of course, apply as many uh, applications of mustache oil that you must. Nah, no, Gadrick just puts on shoes. Or, or just put on shoes. And he's ready to go. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we would get there, and I, you know, the uh, after we've had, like, one or two and got like some soft pretzel bites or something like that i don't know whatever Damn, we'll- adam you're making me hungry dude like I, I want all of that right now yeah uh he would say to you uh roland would say to gadrick uh so gadrick i um listen i i, I wanted to apologize for taking you for granted um i, I want you to understand that i think that you have great value to this team and I understand that recently I have kind of defaulted to giving you um, errands as it were to to run and that's was not necessarily my intent um, you're I, I, I'm stumbling over my words but I just I just want you to know that you are certainly more than an than an errant boy, and uh, I have considered you well one of the few first people that I really bonded with on this crew. And and as we talked before, I I thought that you had potential to to be something more than just a cargo hauler. Uh, 
So please take this very verbose and wordy apology and, and stop me before I spiral out of control. Gadger just keeps listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and another <laughs> thing, and you're like, now, <laughs> now, Roland, look, I don't, you don't need to get your knickers, knickers all in a twist. It's okay. I, I just, I can't help but feel like you asking me. Well, it, it didn't even really feel like asking because it was, you know, something needed to be done, and I was the person there. I could do it. I, the, the doing the thing's not the problem. It's the like it, it almost felt like I was working for Edge Corp again, and I don't like that. I don't like thinking that way, feeling that way about what's going on with my life right now and with with you as our captain. I don't want that. Yes, of course. I, I certainly don't want you to to have those feelings. Um, I will say that there will be times that, as the captain, I, I will have to make quick decisions and give quick instructions, but. You are always your own person as a part of this crew. And while I lead the crew, this is diplomatic. And your opinions and your thoughts have great value to me. Um, And just know that you are are no, no man's servant as long as you are on this crew. I appreciate that. I just, uh... Now, like I said, I don't mind helping. I'm, I'm glad to. It's just, it's just, it's just kind of, kind of sucked a little bit. Everybody going grabbing drinks, and I'm just collecting trash. You know, it was, it was, yeah, that is quite a crappy job to do. I, I can't, can't disagree with you there. But you did it well, and our new goblin friends, well, crew anyway. Um, I appreciate you having my back on that, even if it wasn't handled in the most uh, thoughtful way. Yeah, it's and, and not to, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know if there's any reason we'd bring it up, but like also being the errand boy to go pick up food the other day, you know, we're waiting on. Uh... Well, that was just kind of a series of assumptions, I believe, and I just went along with it. I was just hungry, and then both you and Vincent said you were going to get food and then you said yeah, I was it it, it doesn't it, matter it, it, don't it, don't look don't fret about it it's just <laughs> that it was it was I don't know what it was or something about that that just kind of kind of kind of had me a little bit peeved it, it's it's not a big deal everything's okay tell and you I what I appreciate Gadget, those drinks what next time I'll go get the burgers huh. or the chicken sandwiches if that's what you prefer uh, don't want huh. to assume your your dietary needs or well, I mean, I mean, preferences. I, I, I'd eat a burger. Uh, would well, you want a burger right now? I was going to say, how about, how about we order some right now? Yeah, let's get some burgers. That's good, but like, man, I could go for another burger. I, All hell, this I'd apologizing burger. has made me <laughs> peakish, and I, I could I could eat a burger. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we order burgers. <laughs> yeah, no you burgers. Order at the Click Clack Club, bro. Yeah, thank you, thank you. What'd you say? No burgers at the Click Clack Club. Well, well, we'll we'll go over to the local hotties. <laughs> more shit. The, the Click Clack Club can get you a burger. <laughs> no, I just wanted to give them a hard time. Of course, you can get uh, a burger. I don't uh, care. Uh, I would imagine you order an extra one for Gadrick so he can eat one now and then store one in his cheek pouch there for later. Go. There you go. I mean, I mean if I he mean, wants one, if, sure, if, but that's up if to we have the I, I like for the it. idea of Gadrick just producing two burgers from his cheek pouches. Like, <laughs> what? what's funny? You should hey, mention that, go. Roland. <laughs> It's funny they don't have them here. I've been hanging on to these till you apologize. I, I did actually get you some food. I've, I've got a burger equipped in each of my cheek pouch slots all the time. I'm, uh, a, a Yosoki is never unburgered. Yeah. And, I, and I imagine uh, Roland, as long as Gadrick is is with it, would you know we would stay out, kind of tie one on, as it were, you know. Yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy, but yeah. Yeah, but like play some darts and kind of have some fun with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For well, sure. Okay. Play some nice. pinball. Well, then back at the ship, as you yeah. guys go out, I imagine, <clears throat> you know, we we let the uh, our new goblin friends try out Super Swarm 6, play a couple matches, whatever, and we get a few matches in, and uh, Hestia kind of beckons to Morgan and says, you know, or, or telepathically says, might I have a word? 
And yeah, Morgan would shoot back telepathically. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, come, um, I'll come up. Because I assume y'all are in the. Was it? Where did we say it was? The holodeck or the. The Super train? Swarm 6 is going to be up in the. Is it the bridge or. Where is it? No. Super Swarm 6, I believe, is played uh, in the. Ever canonized that? Well, we it had we the... had moved all the equipment to the, like, the the main where we pilot and all that. We had moved it up there. I remember that uh, okay. to the bridge. So you just got the console, just like, just controllers laying on the on the. Yeah, it's fine on the bridge. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm su- you know I'm supervising. Like it's okay because like Hestia is not gonna let the goblins try to like mess with actually flying the ship or anything. Well, and I'm sure. Wait, you trust us? I'm sure no. I think they got food of shit before. This is, this is Heath talking, not Hestia talking. <laughs> I'm sure His... Gadrick like locked the controls too before we left. No know? doubt. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. a key. With um, a key. Right. key. Click. Yeah. I mean, they're goblins. They're not. They're not blind. They they would they would obviously sense that little bit of low key racism there. No, it's 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 just the ship is not in motion, so the keys aren't in it, so it's not <laughs> yeah, it's it, not that's, viable. That's completely unfair. These are new people that yeah. we don't know very well. It wouldn't matter if they were goblins or dragon kin, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it could be any any race. It's like we don't know it's you just, that well. You've got a and this is a valuable like, ship. Disrespecting also, if, goblin culture is all, you know. But like but like if you don't you don't need to leave the keys to the ship in the ship to just to be on it. Yes, because ships do have keys. This is been established. This is true. This yeah. is true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let that let that one slide this time, Heath. But uh, I'm watching I'm let you, that man. Disrespecting goblin cultures thing slide. Just because I drilled one goblin in the I beginning of the campaign, <laughs> I never I never said anything negative about their culture. Like, um, I'd kill somebody and not have a you know. Well, I mean, they were. Trying I to think steal we should probably us, stop you know? this line of conversation. Right. <laughs> Well, I mean, you started it, not me. I didn't. I mean, I'm talking to Zach. Uh, Uh, I'm trying to make friends with these goblins for what it's worth. I just had to put the old intimidate on them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you broke the drill out on them, man. Yeah. For what it's worth, uh, Morgan shows up wherever the game is. That happens. In the the bridge. (laughs) Let's take it to the bridge. Um, But yeah, Hestia kind of takes you to the side, and then over his shoulder is like, all right, friends, six more matches, and then we get back to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but she kind of takes Morgan aside and says, uh, I you know, have been so busy trying to get all this work done with our new goblin friends, um, and you know, everything's been going on, but uh, you didn't really uh, give me a, a breakdown of what happened while you were gone. Is everything all right? I know... <clears throat> I understand we procured the black hearts. Uh, yes, um, well, in that we made the deal. You know, we're still waiting on the, the actual product, as it were, but, um, yeah. And Morgan would kind of turn their back so that you could kind of see, and they would lift up their shirts. It, you could see, like, the little incision around, like, their kidney area. Um, so uh, I... Oh, are you hurt? No, um, so... Uh, you know, I had the little procedure there uh, and got a necrograph. necrograft. Um, I, I, so far, everything seems all right, um, but that was sort of our bargain. I was a bit of a... And uh, they would look around and make sure Gadrick's not in the area. And be like, I was a bit of a lab rat. Um, could have said guinea pig. Yep. A guinea could, pig? Could uh, have, yep. <laughs> But you didn't. But I didn't. I'm the worst. Um, but yeah, that's. But I mean, everything's fine. Um, the, you know, Vool, he did a check on me before we left. Everything seems um, tip top. Um, I, th- I think I'm fine. I, I must be honest. This is very concerning um it, it obviously it is your body to do with what you want but i hope you thought long and hard before making that decision necrographs are well they're not your <clears throat> typical procedure i mean they they are of undeath 
I am aware. Um, and well, to be fully honest, I well, I didn't think about it too terribly long. I imagine that's probably why the captain was in a bit of a tizzy. Um, but we needed it, and we needed the black heart. So it, it just kind of was one of those situations where it was might as well do it. Um, and so far, <laughs> <laughs> just might as, well. might as well. You want me to sit there and do nothing? <laughs> Um, but um and you can you can definitely tell Morgan's kind of like they're trying to play this off as like right. oh it's fine but they're they're definitely like having some realizations that maybe this was not the smartest course of action um but kind of doubling down on you know, well I mean maybe I won't be going and getting uh, a load of uh, Necrogra- necrographs every time I, I go to the augmentation shop, but uh, this one's done, and so far everything seems alright, and, and we're gonna get the product that we need so that we can be on our way. Morgan, while I appreciate and respect your gumption in getting the job done um, however you had to, in the future, I would advise... Maybe don't jump in front of every bullet to get the job done, yes? Now, obviously, again, I respect your decision, but we're a team, and I don't want you to feel like you have to take unnecessary burdens for the sake of everyone else. This this is a big deal, and I'm not trying to make a fuss about it, but I'm going to be worried about this, so... If you start to feel odd or feel any potential negative effects from this, you be sure to let us know immediately so we can try and find you some help. And they nod and... I will, Tia. Thank you. And um, I... And you, you see some of the, the optimism sort of drain from them. Um, I hear you. And I understand you're right this was not the smartest of moves that I've made but well I hear you we are a team and we'll work together well I don't mean to put you in a sour mood and as they say there's no point in crying over spilled milk but just keep an eye on it um on the or the silver lining I suppose is that It will be fascinating to study and see how it affects you um, as far as performance and all of that. I'm quite excited about that as well. Um, You know, not not to put a a term on it, but mechanically, I'd say that this is quite an interesting uh, situation. I've I've not to put a term on it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yes, do tell, and then I'll I'll fade the conversation. Mm -hmm. But Tia would be interested in that, and then you know ask you kind of the details, what you know about it, what what it can do for you, and then we'd get back to playing some Super Swarm Six, and then after six matches, you know, kind of rotate some shifts and start doing some work again. Sure, and I mean for what it's worth, Morgan, a, a day later. You haven't felt any anything adverse. Okay. You know? Good. Like you're That's, man, I'm waiting for that shoe to drop. You, you, you just know? like feel like, fine, you know? Cool. Awesome. I love it. Thanks. Um I, I wanna see that scene between Vincent Hestia and the goblins playing Super Swarm Six. I wanna one to put Zach to work <laughs> and two because I think it'll be hilarious. <laughs> The goblins are so <laughs> focused during Super Swarm Six, they say nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> you did? <laughs> wow! All right, got him. They're straight yeah. game. Got him. Listen, it's I mean, early not, in the night, well, Adam. It hurts my voice a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to conserve I, I, my I, voice. I, 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 fair, fair enough. Fair well, enough. I will say though, to Adam's point, there is a mechanical benefit to playing Super Swarm Six. So, like, That's true. not that I expect the goblins will get in a fight with us, but anyone else who is playing, like, we want to get. Yeah. get that mechanical benefit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is it that we roll again? Because, like, I totes want to try and go after it. You know. Reflex, I think. I believe it's intelligence. So, no, it's is straight it? dexterity. Oh, dex, okay. 
It's normally intelligence. Normally in intelligence. This, this is yeah. dex. This is straight yeah. dex. Okay, let me check out these goblins' um, stats here. Sput, our our foundry master. Shout out, Sput. Shout out, Sput. The Sput. Swedish wizard um, has <laughs> has worked up some goblin uh, sheets and tokens for us nice. in um, in foundry because I couldn't be arsed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sput. Love you, man. Okay, uh, what is... Okay, th- alright, they got decent decks. Let's go. Who, who's trying to Who's trying to roll? Morgan would play. They're in there. Let's throw them bones! Yeah. I mean, it's just like everybody, right? And the highest is the winner? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Aw. <laughs> oh. See, that's the three total. Uh, Goog got a dirty 20. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, nice. Damn. Wow. Goog might win, because I got a five total. Scrubs. <laughs> get, get. Yep. get Come from the long line of Super Swarm players. <laughs> Who else is in there? I'm the grand He played yeah, yeah, yeah. Super oh, yeah, Swarm yeah. 3. <laughs> 13. <laughs> Damn. Uh, okay, Rattle Snarp with a 14. Okay, be good, so, man. So yeah. Uh, I, I got a roll for Flea Grebe as well. I mean, they all have the same modifier. These names. <laughs> Flea Grebe with the nine. So that's not gonna get it. So it's good. Good. All right, good. Goog. Goog wins it. Good. Yes, congratulations, Goog. But we've got five more matches. <laughs> Do we really have to play five matches in <clears throat> Super Swarm Six? No, no, but we have to play until everybody gets a win. Okay. Well, you could just like. Hand wave that, right? Yeah, I am going to hand wave that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, that's just fine. Take twenty. But yeah, oh, yeah. so they, they, like like I said, they play several matches, you know, to where you know maybe somebody wins a couple times, but everybody gets a win at some point through their you know okay. six or ten matches. And I believe that's a, a a bonus to covering fire, herring fire, mm-hmm. herring fire, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Right. I think it's plus it's two. It's bonus way. to rolls to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah, the thing is a two, a two either way, right? Um, okay, so yeah, uh, you know we haven't. Vincent, were you playing Super Swarm? Say uh, you were, right? Yeah, yeah. You were involved. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I rolled and I got a uh, thirteen on the decks. Hey, that's right. G- GM, what's the beer situation? Just curious. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna mention that the goblins did, in fact. Go get some some brews. They got okay. they got they got like several cases of brews. It's um goblin mead. But we specifically told them not to get ponies of light beer. It's not ponies. It's it's not it's, ponies, it's, 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 it's beer, goblin tall boys. So they're just regular sized beers. <laughs> okay. Just, all right, all right. Okay. Also, it's mead, so it's not you know. It's goblin like, mead. It's goblin mead. Uh, that's my question. Now, like, what does one ferment? That is goblin. Do you do you actually mm, want to no. know the answer to that, Morgan? Nope, I do. I want... do before I put any of that in my body. Too bad that's for sure. I'm not going to tell you. I will <laughs> tell you this though. Morgan would try it, and they would try yeah. and get Vincent to get along, little doggy. <laughs> Come have a sip with me. It's the finest goblin mead in all of Absalom Station. Trust me on this. My cousin's cousin's cousin runs a brewery. You never put something so delicious in your mouth before. God, we're gonna go blind. Yeah, be the judge of it, and he's gonna actually grab one of the, and he's gonna inspect it, try to see if anything, like, uh, like any of the ingredients or anything on there. It's just like, <laughs> wait a second, there's not even nutrition facts on a regular beer. Oh so no, like, you're not. Yeah, no. so it's like, wait a second, son of a bitch, you know. So he's just like, <sighs> oh, look at me, this makes me blind. I'll be able to sniff you out, and then I'll kill you. All right? Oh, you're gonna be fine. No. Put some hair on your chest. Kill you. I'm gonna kill you. All hair. I'm gonna braid it. I'm braid it. Okay. All right. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's just gonna like just open that shit. He's gonna take a quick smell of it, <laughs> and strong. I'm sure it smells like it's vinegar. Mistake. It's pungent. You know? It's strong. Yeah. Bottoms up! 
and he drinks it, and he 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 he, he downs the whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh my he downs God. the whole right. fucking thing, and That's you can brave. see him like he he's like clenching his fist while he's doing it, you know, like. <laughs> All right, like because he's not going to like be not shown up, you know. This this. this goblin, this goblin mead, it's pretty stout. It's 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 not too much worse than some of the really stout dwarven mm-hmm. concoctions that you've come across. Sure, but I still need you to roll a Constitution save. That's the thing, dwarves. I imagine make really good alcoholic beverages. Goblins, on the other hand, I imagine, just sort of siphon jet fuel and mix it with something. Now, here's the thing. Would you consider this a poison? Do you get a, a bonus to poisons? I do. <laughs> I will let you carry that bonus over to this room. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm neither going to confirm nor deny poison status, but well, I will say. Technically, all alcohol is a poison. There, yeah, there, mean, you right, right, there you go. Right, yeah. Yeah. So. It's it's a plus two racial bonus against poison spells. Well, exactly, and spell exactly. Slow yeah. but steady. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is oh, a dear. seven. A seven <laughs> total. Vincent, you total. you you think you're hard. You know what I mean? Uh, like you think you're 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 a stout dwarven man. Uh, Saint your first rodeo. Right. One of these goblin meads. When you just shotgunned it the way that you did, it it kind of sends you. For a loop, man, it kind of it kind of knocks you on your ass for a second. But you, I will say, you will be able to recover. It's not going to give you any any lasting damage. But you think to yourself, perhaps I should sip instead of chug. Yeah. The next. And one. you just kind of like see him just like place his like hand like brace himself up against the counter. He's just like, <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> talking about, big guy. <laughs> Get it! Get in there! Get you some of that! <laughs> That's for, the good for a stuff. moment, for a moment, Hestia's instinct is to have her um, helpful telepath thing reach out and let him re-roll it, and then she's like, "No, I want to see how this plays." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, steady on, lesson. mate. Steady on. Come on, you can do it. Uh, you know, and he's just trying to will himself, like, just to be able to like, stand <laughs> straight, just... you know? Yeah, just kind of almost scre- screaming at himself. <laughs> You're like, like a 16-year-old taking a shot of vodka for the first time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just going to exactly. scream myself But the sobriety. only difference is that he doesn't handle that shit, like, w- like weakly. In other words, it doesn't just come pouring out of his yeah. mouth. And, you know? Yeah, no, I, I will no. say, man, it's a struggle, but you manage it. And right. and you earn some respect from the goblins in the process. Uh, they're, they're pretty impressed with your fortitude on that. Nice. It's, it's just like almost trying to fight back vomit, almost, almost. You know, it's like Pugh. burns. <sighs> no more, dude. Morgan, I'll get you. used to it. I get used to it. Just I need it. I need to pace myself. <laughs> Did you vomit in your mouth? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I didn't we got like several cases, might. though. I mean, you gonna help us How drink it? How does it taste? Mor- Morgan How comes does it taste? Oh, yeah, I mean, m- mild, just mildly of jet fuel. There's like an there's an air. There's just there's <laughs> just, just like scooch. an air of jet fuel. You know what I mean? But yeah. otherwise, it's a pre- it's, it's a, a it's a pretty hearty. Is there a cl- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's <laughs> a curly of jet fuel. Uh, it's 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 m- mild jet fuel. Uh, mostly yeah. mead, you know. So just uh, just a little tidbit of interest, something interesting I thought about was that there is actually a graphic tee design for Starfinder's Blood Orange Ale for it. It's a space goblin drink. I have that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I bought yeah, you I have that. that you know? yep. And uh, yeah, I just thought that that's like, oh, that would be that's pretty interesting. Cause mm-hmm. It is a thing. Yeah, it, it is a thing. Good. They actually do brew their own shit. You know, it's, it's real cool. Mm. As you're, as you're like, it's a blood orange ale, huh? Mm-hmm. I was blood aware IPA, of this I of think. this in lore yeah. beverage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just, I, I think you're pretty close. Meat is like, uh, it's yeah, like it's honey, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like blood orange flavored jet fuel. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you know the good yeah. stuff. Absolutely. Exactly. All right. Well, you uh. Everybody is is drinking something. It seems. I think mm-hmm. probably Gadrick and Roland made out 
little a little better in the deal. We didn't make out. I yeah, was, we didn't make out. I at was all. so I was like, go on. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man! Wait a second. You make you start to make out, but you feel the burgers in his cheek pouches. <laughs> like, Morgan. Yes. Yes, this was nice for one moment. No, it's not. Everything's terrible. So, See, the best thing about these cheek pouches, though, is that I always get to taste it. Oh. Whatever's in there, I always I can just like stick my tongue over and get a little lick of the bird. Oh. Oh. A little sample. Oh. <laughs> it's still good okay. if you want it, Rose. Vincent Earl. Earl's. Vincent Earl's Earl. right there at that. <laughs> that thought. No, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think that it's time that we head back to the <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't Morgan drink? Morgan was going to take a sip. Like they weren't going to. Um, but oh, after, so slyly was was waiting on one hundred percent. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Listen, right, they yeah, are taking yeah. Tia's comment to heart. Okay. We're not going to jump in this front of the these first bullets. bullets <laughs> yeah, Mor- Morgan just had surgery. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 We're going to yeah, take you, crazy. You should probably you gotta test it though. Um, they would. They would. Uh, <laughs> like after you finish your coughing fit or, or screaming fit, I suppose, kind of come over and slap you on the back and be like, "All right," and and they they would kind of look at you like, "Oh, I hope I'm saying this right." Um, are we gonna? Are we gonna get pissed? Is that, did I, is this, and they would like hold up their beverage, like, we're gonna get drunk, we're gonna get Man, pissed. Yeah, he just kind of like looks at, looks, looks at them just weakly, just like, too fucking right, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Who is pissed? I'm calmer than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's like two of the Australian, like, slang things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Absolutely. <laughs> you all reconvened the ship, uh-huh. managed to get some sleep. In the morning, a truck driven by two of presumably Ragenvul's minions uh, arrive with 50 tons of black hearts in the back, boxed up. 160 to 250,000, to be precise. Yes, individual black hearts. Uh, I believe it's 240,000, but let's not split hairs on 10,000 black hearts, okay? Yeah. Well, but there was some some variation because of, like, are they, you know, to what degree are they dehydrated? Yeah, exactly. There's some variance in weight, right? Individual human hearts have have a little variance. Also, nobody said they're all human, you know? Yeah, there's probably some best hearts in there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. This, This is Starfinder we're talking about. There's. Who knows? Oodles what and kind doodles of hearts. Of potential hearts. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of... Maybe even some bantered hearts. Mm-hmm. If they even had hearts. Maybe. Oh, I, I, going for bantered. Listen, I'm I'm no expert on bantered it's, physiology, so who's to say? I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's all oh, like... Yeah. <laughs> It's all like uplifted bear and like dragonkin hearts, so there's only like forty thousand of them. Right, right. <laughs> that would be disappointment, I think, to the to the buyer. Hey, t- tons of t- t- net weight is net weight. Net weight is net weight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Um, <laughs> however, a- after you load up the the, the black hearts, well, it's going to take you a few hours. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. About eight, but I, I think you can probably cut that down considering you have three extra laborers, right? Mm-hmm. But the goblin's well, like, so wait, is there trash in these? This doesn't feel like trash. Wait, so is is the engine installed now? The engine it's is, all yeah, done? y'all finished it, yeah. Oh, that's, okay. why, that's why we're taking some recreation <laughs> on the third day while we're waiting for the Blackhearts. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Successfully installed. Yeah, um, everything yes, looks good. Goblins help this us. This is a this is a type of trash. Um, I we there are many types of trash out there in the universe, as you sh- soon shall see, <laughs> my new <laughs> goblin friends. What even is trash? Well, right, yeah. right. I mean, is it one define? man's trash? Another man's treasure? Exactly. Trash is where the heart is, and one man's treasure. <laughs> Maybe is in the, the real top. trash was the friend you <laughs> made along the way. Like you stop, you stop rolling mid sentence, and he looks over. He's like, "That was a good one." <laughs> I, I've really come along and come to understand our new friends. Indeed, indeed. Uh, but they yeah, help so you. Them all up. They help yeah. you cut it down a few hours. Okay. Beautiful. Um, about this time, you know, you can you can certainly uh, send Tarika a text or something to get the the coordinates of where this buyer is, right? And uh, she comes back with some coordinates. When you punch it up in the infosphere, 
you find out it is on Vesk 2 in the Vescarium. It's in a, uh, on an island called Kilty, deep within a region called the Ghost Mire. Mm. Uh, if anybody wants to roll a little culture check, yes, please get a little more info, <clears throat> just a little more info on the um, on the area. Culture is not one that you have to have ranks in, is it? It is. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I am not rolling that. Yeah, yeah. That New culture is here. a dirty twenty. Okay. Dirty twenty. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, that's yeah, that's pretty I'm good. A, I'm gonna roll it as well, just just in case. Yeah. Uh, that's a twenty-six. Okay, yeah. So you you obviously will, will know that Vesk Two uh, is an ocean planet, right? It's got a bunch of little sprawling islands all over it. And uh, as you dig in about the 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 Ghost Mire, you get some some strange info about it, right? Um, it's it's there's it's like ruins, okay? Uh, that's sort of plagued. By this uh, mist that transforms people into specters, you can't get a lot of hard data, but but this is just kind of some stuff that you pick up about that region. Like into ghosts, like yeah. specters. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so it's a freaky deaky mist in these ruins, and, the, just... and I mean it's called the Ghost Mire. Yeah, well, I'm not, now we know why. Mm-hmm. I like. To imagine, like, as soon as we hear about that we're going to Vest 2 or whatever, Hestia and Morgan immediately kind of, like, huddle up and, you know, they're culture buddies and they're like, okay, this is what I know about it and this is what I know about it. And then <clears throat> sort of in unison kind of turn to the party and are like, uh, okay, it's uh, an archipelago planet full of mist that turns people into ghosts. Not the whole planet, cool. to be to be <laughs> clear. <laughs> The just the archipelago. Yeah. The, yeah, just this the, area. The, yeah, it is an archipelago planet. The place we are going has freaky deaky mists that turn people into ghosts. Of course so, it does. So like a whole planet? <laughs> no. Yes, no, <laughs> just the whole planet, Vincent. The whole planet. For, for, as, no. far, as, planet. as far as you're concerned, yes. <laughs> so, so, like, turns them into ghosts, you mean, it, like, it, it just kills them? That's where uh, ghosts no. come from, right? When people die? I, I would imagine. Ghost. Well, okay. I would, uh, when a mummy goes, then a two-step process. <laughs> 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 two-step process. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> the way you were describing it, that tracks as well. Um, yeah, I would imagine <laughs> it would either kill you and then raise you as a ghost, or somehow just wholesale transform you into a ghost. I don't know. I'm not a ghost specialist. Seems to me either way you end up a ghost. And that's just yes, not it's, desirable. it's not good. So, Hold on. No, nothing against ghosts. Is Wait. there, after Wait. having... No. Go ahead, sorry. Go, ghosts are real? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Catrick, they are. Yes, but Santa Claus is not. I mean, you oh, literally went to an undead <laughs> club on Absalom. Undead State. ain't ghosts right. there, GM. So, listen. They're very different. Gats is trying to come apart because he's thinking about, like, vampires and werewolves <laughs> and Matrix shit and, like, <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen Underworld. This shit is going to get like, nasty. It's like, I've seen Poltergeist. I watched Ghost Ship just the other day. <laughs> so, Sorry. Yeah. after getting this, the cultural based information and finding more about, oops, ghosts, um, is there anything like mysticism that somebody could learn about? I'm just, I'm just I'm afraid not. Out. I'm afraid okay. not, Morgan. Fair enough. It was a nice enough. try. Though. I have given yeah. you all the I'm info that I'm going to give you it. on the region. I, could, could I, I, could I use the power of the infosphere to try to learn everything I could about ghosts and how they work? <laughs> <laughs> Surely someone has written a scholarly work. I, I'm, scholarly sh- I'm work. sure they have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> consult the the player's handbook, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam's face read, tickled me so much. Uh, read that entry in the Alien Archive for further information. Yeah, yeah. that's beyond the scope of this <laughs> okay. adventure, okay? I mean, I'm, th- I'm asking for permission to do so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't care. I figured you probably would have at some point anyway. Not you, yes. uh, Tia, but you, Heath. I figured you would. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, not really. I mean, I know general stuff, but I haven't really like 
had a reason to specifically look up ghosts in Starfinder. I mean, Star I think, Finder. you know, because spirits are all different. There's many different types of them. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that we can know for sure is that they're going to be incorporeal, mm-hmm. and that yep. they're going to be difficult to, to, to hit. There isn't anything written in, in the archive about transforming into ghosts so i think we just have to figure that out when we get now there. now to be fair there's nothing in your in your contract about fighting any ghosts okay well to be fair a <clears throat> lot of our contracts have kind of fucked us over to in the past to <laughs> say to say right, everybody mentor of you in a ghostbuster <laughs> I mean, no, I was, it, you, you ruined the joke i was about to make uh, no he just got just, there before he just you got did. there first no there was it was Tia was going to turn and be like, if we happened to come upon some ghosts who had committed crimes and we were to have to bust them, <laughs> mm-hmm. then we would be the ghost busters. I'll allow it, but... I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> Gadrick. The long way. With, with your hall successfully loaded, your brand new signal booster drift engine installed, and your fantastic goblin friends in tow. You plot a course for Vesk 2. I had to roll 3d6 to see how long that would take and divide it by <gasps> 2 because you're a signal booster. Okay. What are you gasping about? I'm just so excited that we put actual quantifiable means to space travel. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was gasp worthy. That was gasp worthy. <laughs> It's uh, been so the, nebulous. The fabric of space you. and time has changed. Now, <laughs> I support you, Emily. I rolled a set. I rolled pretty pretty shitty on this. I rolled a one and two threes. So that's seven. Then we divide okay. that by two. I'm pretty sure that rounds down. Mm-hmm. Three days in the drift. That's not shitty. That's, that's good. Really that's good. we want. Yeah, yeah. The no, no. Of time. I, I, I'm. I mean, I just you know you rolled anything low. low that I roll. I always yeah. just say it's shitty, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But no, that's you. advantageous for you all. You're right. trying to beat. Right. The crew of the Wintermorn, who got a several day head start on you. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they don't have the divide by two signal booster, mm-hmm. right? They do not. They had oh, a yeah. regular Suck drift it. engine, but they got a, they got a, a you know, several days on yeah. on you. So, you have three days in the drift, essentially. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that y'all <clears throat> want to do while we're mm-hmm. while we're here on the ship, hanging out in the elephant? Three days autopilot vacation. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, At some point, you know, I mean, I'm sure other people have things they want to do, but I will say that um, at some point I would like to go to Morgan's cabin um, and and try to speak with them uh, one-on-one. Okay. So, yeah, as... The captain kind of heads up to the quarters or to the bathroom. Like, the layout of the ship's a little different than my head cannon, but it's all good. Um, like, just outside the quarter, their quarters, Roland would hear, like, kind of singing and, like, a whistle kind of type thing. Um, but, yeah, just outside the door, this is what he would hear. And valleys so pale Glitter in splashes of moonlight Frozen winds blow, howl and wail Snow falls high and so bright Soon, oh my dear, the sun will ascend And usher us into the mild But until then, my love Dream without end, my beautiful snow-blessed child. Wow. Um, Roland at that would be really, uh, particularly the lyrics... Um, and just the kind of the, the beauty of the voice 
I'd actually bring a tear to his eye and he'd kind of have to like gather himself a little bit um, before he knocks on on Morgan's door. But then he does. And uh, Morgan, just a couple of seconds later, uh, you would hear like shower turn off and Morgan would come and open the door and say, oh, Captain, oh, please uh, come in. And so they would have kind of just towel around their waist and on their shoulder would be their little pet, Sersha. Um, and as Roland, I guess, comes into uh, their quarters, Sersha would you know, just kind of like whistle around. Like you can obviously tell that they were singing like a duet, essentially, in the shower. Um, what can I do for you, Captain? Please uh, have a seat. Uh, that that song, Morgan. I so uh, yeah. Roland is, is really kind of you, you. You see that on his face. I mean, there's like kind of a wistful sadness there. And I'm, I'm sure that you sense that being an empath and everything. And he says, that, that song, Morgan, that, those words, it's, it reminds me of my home. Oh, um, and I feel like Morgan would know. What is the name of the planet? Lajok. Lajok, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, they would know about, like, the whole situation with Lajok and about how it's cold and and everything right yeah i mean for those that don't know i would think morgan would but for listeners that may not know um Lejuk is the vlakan planet and their star is dying and they're pretty much doomed that planet's doomed to like freeze over yeah. once the star dies and you know a lot of the lyrics in there was talking about you know cold i mean his last name is mons Geldus, which is mountain of cold you know um (laughs) the the first words of that are mountain of ice you know uh but what brought him to tears is that in that verse there's this hope that the sun will ascend and for him and and his family and his people that's that's not the case and so he's just kind of uh, he was not expecting to be thinking about that and now he's feeling it completely um morgan would kind of like put everything together and, and uh, they would sit down and be like you know have a seat captain like, um that's it's actually one of the only things that i can sort of recall from my my actual home you know the uh, my quote-unquote family you know they, they adopted me but i'm originally from triaxis and you know it's it's been pretty chilly there for quite some time <laughs> um but that's uh that's a lullaby that I remember from there. I don't really remember my birth parents so much, but I remember that song, and then I found it a few years later. So, but yeah, I... it, it's it's beautiful, truly. Uh, poor my my, it just it just brings me sorrow to think of my family and their foolishness. And you know, you kind of see this weird change you know he's there's like a lot of resentment he, you know there's a lot of resentment coming out of him now well I'm sorry captain I didn't I hope that it mostly brings out the good memories of your home and not so much the bad um uh, and then he kind of like collects himself a little bit and he says no Morgan please don't apologize that's that was really touching and beautiful and I would love to hear that song again it just kind of caught me unaware um I actually came here to apologize to you as as you're kind of like you sort of reestablishing your 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 your, your calm um mm-hmm. Sarsha would scamper across the back of Morgan's shoulders and hop down like onto your lap and kind of just snuggle into you like because I imagine that being Morgan's pet like they are a little empathic as well so Mm -hmm. just trying to snuggle in sort of a comfort pet make you feel better Uh, he certainly doesn't protest and (laughs) starts petting petting him so I'm sorry captain what are you apologizing to me for um and he's like trying to 
regather his thoughts. He came here like so determined and just was like completely un unnerved by that. And um, he says, uh, Morgan, I've come to, to really care for you and I feel that I've let those feelings dictate my behavior as your crew member. What I'm trying to say is that you are your own person and it is not for me to tell you what you can and can't do. And well, I feel that I might have overstepped uh, out of a concern of protection when it came to the necrograft. Um, I, w I, will, I will say that I'm not pleased that you elected to have this surgery, but I don't want to dictate what it is that you do with your life. I, it's very important to me that everyone on this crew have the freedom to be and to do whoever they are and whatever they would like. Within reason, of course. Um, I, I just, I can't lose anyone and I think I would be lost in this crew, particularly if I did not have you. Morgan would kind of like sort of just pat your knee and be like, Captain Roland. Captain, please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it would just kind of like smile at you be like, I, I have come from a family that dictates that <sighs> suffice it to say, Captain, everything that you expressed at Vool's place was sincere and heartfelt and I didn't at any point feel like you were telling me what to do even as my captain I felt like you were concerned and I greatly appreciated that Tia talked to me and they would kind of look down a little bit like and uh, she was right I do have a tendency to bite off a bit more than I can chew or jump in front of bullets, as she said. So I appreciate when I have people who are genuinely concerned about my well-being, not just whether or not I'm doing something that makes them happy. And that's what you... That's what you gave me there, and that's what Tia gives me, that's what the rest of this crew gives me. And I'm just... You've nothing to apologize for. I'm grateful for it. You look out for me, you look out for the crew. And I'm glad to have you. Morgan, have I told you how I received these scars? And he points to the, like, three scars that are across the bridge of his nose. No, I just assumed they were... Facial enhancers. <laughs> just trying to be, like, chill about it. Like. Um, no, uh... No, these are not uh, self-imposed scars, though I suppose in a way that they, they are. Um, you've reminded me of it, actually, with your song. Because uh, this was back when I was at the Late Jock Academy. Um, I was there getting my training, my familial training to be a leader as my pack expected me to stay home and lead the pack into a certain doom, I'm sure. They, they believe that leaving the planet is abandoning tradition. And it was much later that I came to realize that that was not for me, and that's why I'm here now, but that's a different story. In any case, I was at the school learning how to be a leader. And uh, as part of a group assignment, we were taken to a remote part of one of the mountain ranges and then given just the bare essentials. Our assignment was to orienteer our way back to the academy and survive. The trick was that none of us were assigned the official role of squad leader. The intent was to see who would naturally rise to the position. I may be tooting my own horn here, but early on it became clear that I was the best candidate. However, there was another Vlaka in the group who felt otherwise. I suppose the test of any good leader, and I 
and tested in this way every single day with his crew, <laughs> is to have your leadership challenged. This Flaka, uh, Skinner, we will call him, att attempted to take over the group by force. He challenged me to a duel. However, I knew that we needed all of us at our best physical condition to survive the mission. I denied Skinner that duel. He attacked me anyway and gave me the scar. Still, I did not fight. The rest of the clan saw my resolve and circled around me, preventing Skinner from causing any further damage. We continued on our assignment and eventually Skinner caught up to us and he realized he couldn't do it alone. I tell you this story because I need all of us at our best. And perhaps I should have fought him then. Maybe I shouldn't. Not sure the, the lesson that I hope to impart here, but I do think that there is some things to be taken from this. And namely, that I will always do what's best for the crew rather than what's best for me. And thank you for being a part of it. Now, will you sing me another verse of that too? Of course, Captain. All right. You know, Emily, gotta give you a dirty 30 for composing <laughs> that tune. Adam, you can have the one I took from you back. Oh, okay. I lost it. Gracious. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, dude. Add another one. I mean, good luck All using right. it, though. I don't know how you're yeah, gonna. That was great. Um, yeah, well done. Well done, y'all. Well done. And, and good job on, uh, you know, again, uh, com composing that little. Yeah, that song was awesome. Thank you. It was yeah. really, really beautiful. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. So we are getting very, very close to your arrival in Vesk 2 around this time. In fact, you all get to notice that, you know, this is obviously the third day in, in the drift. You're going to be approaching your destination very soon. So before we, before we conclude this... Uh, you know, this this uh, interlude, let's say. Anybody else got anything they need to handle, any business on the ship? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, for one, I just wanted to say, Tia's goal over the few days has been trying to hang out with our, our goblin buddies. Okay. And, uh, and, and just become friends with them. I was going to ask you, like, I, if there's any, like, quirks or differences between them. I don't know which one she'd vibe with the most. <laughs> but she's definitely trying, both out of feeling a little guilty about having to pull the old drill intimidate on them. <laughs> but also, like, trying to, you know, sh she's all about, like, have, meeting new people and being respectful of people and helping people out. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I, I, I will say this about the goblins, right? Um, Rattlesnarp is more timid you know is a little more soft spoken mm -hmm. um flea grebe uh, she is kind of the the roughest one of them she's the snarliest uh one goog is somewhere in the middle right okay goog's a little more, goog is the one who uh piped up at at Flea Grebe and Rattlesnarp arguing and told him to shut up and made the deal with right. Roland. Go Goog seems to be the most reasonable one, so I feel like she probably would vibe with him the most mm -hmm. <clears throat> and has, has, you know, over, it's been, what, three days, you said? Yeah. So, I mean, over three days, like, there's so much Super Swarm 6 that could have gotten played, um, as well as, you know, just showing them um, around the ship and some of her... Uh, you know, tools and tinkery stuff that they'd probably be interested in, even if they try to duct tape it together. Mm -hmm. But her kind of ultimate way of trying to apologize for intimidating them or, you know, having to, you know, be a little heavy handed and keeping them on track is that she shows them Mantis, she, which she, they've already seen Mantis, but she brings them to her um, kind of quarters where she she works on stuff and for the first time since we got some information about where we're headed i am going to reconfigure my drone okay and she's gonna let them 
watch and and help a little bit, you know, like hand hand her tools and stuff, but not get. She's very precious about Mantis, so like not too too um, involved. But yeah, I am gonna actually reconfigure Mantis uh, to be able to use. Uh, you know, ranged weapons. Okay. We'll target EAC and, you know, do you have some to like that. insert a weapon into Mantis in order to use that? Cause I believe Mantis has a Dosko, right? She does, but I have, I've got the loot sheet and we've been storing up weapons okay. to, to, cause I made that point the last time we brought it up is like, we need to kind of start setting aside some weapons. So we've got, different things for when we reconfigure okay. so we definitely have sure. I, I think I'm, I'm gonna have her use uh long arms and switch to probably a stealth drone a stealth drone with long arms and that's and that's all all good on the sheet as far as there's nothing because I, I i mean it'll be it'll be good on my hephaestus sheet yeah okay um yeah yeah and, th- and there's nothing they don't need like long arm proficiency or anything like that well, that's all stuff that I can I in reconfiguring oh, okay. I can redo okay. all their feats and all, all that right, stuff. Alright, very good. Yeah. Well yeah, I mean absolutely uh I think that Goog would be watching along, you know. Yeah, and I hope he's excited. But so it'd basically be I think he'll, she'll keep it of a similar shape because she's she likes the mantis theme sure. or whatever, but it will go from a medium to a small size drink. Okay. Just like a little sleeper. Shrinking mantis down, huh? Yeah. Well, I, at some point during the construction, you know, Goog would say, Listen, that looks really cool, but you know, if you just took a layer of duct tape and just wrapped it around oh, the legs, you could reinforce <laughs> the armor on the drone. To to both placate Goog and, and his friends and to try to, you know, show solidarity, she takes some duct tape and puts one little strip around the back two, <laughs> the back two legs. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm calling it right now. That strip of duct tape is going to be a lifesaver in like 22 <laughs> right. episodes. It's okay. going to be like a plus one to the roll, you know? <laughs> we get we get stranded on a beach yeah. and need some duct yeah. tape desperately. Gonna, and it's like, oh, fi- well, I've got mantis. We're going to find out if we cover ourselves in duct tape, we are immune to being turned into ghosts. Yep, that's it. That's all we yeah. needed. All right, Tia, roll me a perception check. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, well, it's a natural 20. Natural so. 20. Nice. Okay, so... You do notice, uh, you know, a- after you've you've reconfigured this drone and stepped away from it, done another thing, as you're all sort of getting getting your stuff together to head out of the drift, you do notice that there's a couple extra layers of duct tape around the uh, <laughs> the legs of the drone. It, 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 it appears with that natural twenty that the, the goblins went back and reinforced a little bit more. Just because they want to make sure nothing right. happens to Mantis, you know they care about yeah. it. Well, that's sweet though. That's she, so sweet. She, yeah, she yeah. notices uh, and you know appreciates it for the the you know gesture and sentiment. I mean, they haven't like and, completely covered it in duct tape, but just just right. a little reinforcement on 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 what they might have seen as the weakest part of of Mantis's right. legs, you know. I, I appreciate the mechanical advantage that they provided. To us. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Plus one AC. Yep. One temporary hip. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll say one temporary <laughs> HP. I'll take it. I'll we'll give, we'll give Mantis one <laughs> bit. temporary HP. That could be the difference, it could, really, it with could. a drone. Absolutely. So again, we got just a few minutes, right? We've we've now cut back up. We're we're a few minutes from um from jumping back out of the drift into Vesk 2 airspace. So if you all want to make your way to the bridge, now would be a good time. Take it to the bridge! Take it to the bridge! Alright, everybody, vacation's over. Take it back to, the to flying, back to landing, back to doing our job. Uh, Blarg. You know, the goblins would see you all kind of moving towards it. What, what, what's going on? Are, are, we, are we about to get there? Yeah, you uh, you might want to buckle up. Can we, can we sit up front? Can we watch? Yeah, can we watch? Are are there like jump chairs or like any any like aft crew member chairs that they can? Let them sit on the dashboard, mate. <laughs> or do we need to like duct tape I, them to the wall? We won't, we I just won't imagine anything. We promise. Pressed up to the glass, like noses smushed, looking out. <laughs> <That stitch>, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, let's lean into this duct tape thing. I like that. Duct tape. Duct tape. They ask. 
They yeah. ask, and Tia looks over with a, a sheer and mandibly grin and just immediately starts right. like unrolling the duct tape. <laughs> I, I like where your head's at, Tia. That's, that's uh, how you... That, there you go. That's good thinking. Okay, well, if that if that is their response, I literally start duct taping them to the wall. <laughs> hey, uh, Tia, you could. Uh, just just on the off chance we have a little bit of a bumpy, rough landing or turbulence on the way in, uh, you might want to... Might want to use that entire roll of tape. Just, just all of we them. brought plenty of rolls of tape. There's, there's lots of tape. <laughs> a roll for each of them, then. Silence okay. is golden. It's gonna be like those, it's, 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 it's like that frat thing that that like dumb frat oh, yeah. dudes do, where they actually duct tape themselves <laughs> to, 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 to the to the is, wall. That is one of my favorite. Like old internet things is the like people having a LAN party, oh, that and then there's that. one guy yeah. suspended duct by duct tape <laughs> from the ceiling. Yeah, so <laughs> no, that's no, that's what it is. We duct tape them to the walls, and then duct tape meads in their hands, so they're you know <laughs> every forty hands. I can't, I can't drink if I've got my hands duct taped to the wall. The hands no, are the free, we get free hands, just the the, yeah. the center mass of the goblin. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. sort of free hands. They have. They have me duct taped yeah. to their hands, mm -hmm. but they can move, they can put them to their mouth. I'm yeah, like 50, 50 on this idea, if I'm honest. <laughs> listeners, <laughs> listeners, this is the this is the fan art I need. I need goblins duct taped to walls with uh, Edward Forty Playing hands. Edward Forty hands with also, goblin meat. I, also, I went ahead and pre-rolled a uh, engineering. I got a twenty-two to duct tape them to the walls. So I imagine they have like a NASCAR style, like eight-point harness, harness yeah. situation. Yeah. Listen, you know? listen, they are quite confident in the strength of the duct tape. Don't be stingy with the tape now. Really get in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Tia, and Tia says, "Yes, that's right. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Oh, what are you talking about it? You know I'm about it." Oh my okay, god. Okay, alright. The the goblins are securely duct taped <laughs> to the walls of your bridge. Okay? Thank god. As as you all take your seats and and jump out of the drift. Okay. You find in front of you a dense swarm of hundreds of immense creatures floating in the space in front of you. Did you say swarm? I said a swarm of creatures. <laughs> These creatures are, I mean, absolutely massive, okay? Massive creatures. Creatures. They have huge tentacles that are radiating, like, bright, bioluminescent colors. And they have these translucent, gelatinous bodies that flash with, like, this inner fire or electricity. Does anybody want to roll me a mysticism check? Yes! <laughs> Sorry, I, Emily was transfixed. Breath. Um, okay. We just went into a jellyfish. Yep. This swarm. is this is not how I saw this. Uh, didn't think this was gonna be a hentai, but okay. Um, that is a where the uh twenty three. A twenty three. All right. So, Morgan, you recognize these as pyrozoa. They're, they're magical beasts who uh, have these amorphous bodies that vent uh, and pro uh, they produce and vent superheated plasma through their pores. Beyond this swarm of pyrozoa, you see Vesk 2, this, this island planet Vesk 2. And you stand sort of transfixed by all of these incredible colors that you see. And after a few moments, the Wintermorn jumps out of the drift oh, right next it. to you, right well within range of your sensors. Immediately, you get a ping on your comms. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Gadrick first looks to Roland. You want me to punch it? Yes. Uh, Morgan, would, it. Morgan would let you know, like, wait, 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 wait. I don't think we need to punch through these. These, these things are highly volatile. Well, open the comps. Let's, let's Gadget see. pulls the throttle back. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> that Slows it. down. It's oh, like okay. taking your foot off the pedal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, y'all were y'all were like stopped. To be to be right. clear, 
right? Okay, yeah. You were stopped. You open comms, with, and you see on the vid screen the crew of the Wintermorn, right? You recognize Niv- Neva, you know, the Yusoki captain. You recognize mm-hmm. Dizzy, your friendly Best uh, friend. dragon kin, right? Future crew member. <laughs> mm-hmm. You also recognize um, a, a, a Hilki woman that was with Neva. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You and you also get another crew member, Tia, that, that looks so familiar. It's a male Verthani. And you can't quite place where you recognize this person from, but he looks extremely familiar to you, Tia. And Neva leans in in, in front of the uh, in front of the vid screen there. She says, Can't surprise uh, can't say I'm surprised to see y'all again. I uh, had a feeling you were on the same job we were. But I'm impressed. You managed to beat us here. But uh, what do you say we set up with a race, huh? First one through this cluster of fire jellies and on planet is first in line to talk to the buyer. Deal? That's what's up. This is a deal. All right. Like, like ca- the captain, the, the, his blood was like flowing, you know? And he looks at Gadrick and he's like, ho- hoping that Gadrick's on the same page to really get, take this thing for yeah, a Yeah, Ga- Gadrick is absolutely pumped for All right, this yes. and kind of disappointed that he didn't just punch it so, around. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so it must be a fair race, Gadrick. Neva, Neva makes, a, makes a sign in common indicating for the pilot to punch it. He says, all right, we'll see ya. Uh, <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. That's good. That's good. We should have, we should have punched it. <laughs> <laughs>